What is up, YouTube? Team Dreadnought here, bringing you our GBT03 uh, deck profile. Also brought to you by McDonald's. I think it's brought to you by McDonald's. We wish we brought to you by McDonald's. <laughs> and we have more money. We have money. We have they money. Get inside the bell while you're loving. But anyway, we have um, <laughs> one of our newest members on the team with us today. So for our, obviously we have our um, Stridus sister units out with us today for Say our hello. for our main decks. Obviously, this is going to change as soon as Dark Lord gets his shadows in a month. Um, but anyway, we. But anyway, like nineteen days. But anyway, we have Mike, Mike, Brandon, Dark Lord, and myself. And then joining us, playing Great Nature, is our main is our main man Lorenz, our newest two, our newest member. Yeah, we love him. Lorenz. Um, been a member at our local card shop for a while, and we made him to the team for a while. So, um, he primarily plays a uh, Great Nature, but he also um, is another Aqua Force player, just for extra. Love me the nature, I'll leave that son. Soon, it's all about the berry. <laughs> He's so too far away. From why do you keep hitting me on video? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we I'll are here. See we piece. are here to bring you the set review for uh, G Booster Set Three Sovereign Star Dragon. It came out in Japan. <laughs> it came out in Japan uh, just uh, last Friday, uh, May 29th. Uh, we will not get it until July 10th of this year. So Thanks. sad. Stop yeah, shaking the, the damn thing. Where's moving the leg? Yeah. Um, after this, though, we don't know what the hell we're going to get because then we have Bermuda and then hopefully not Token Rombu. Bermuda's Rom just broke. I want And then hopefully not Token Rombu because it shouldn't. That will never see an English print. If it does, that shouldn't it should be in Weiss. Is it that, it, it, it we have the game for? It won't see an English print. Anyway, um, in this set, um, standard 104 cards. We got two generation mirrors in this set. Um, the clans that were supported in this set include Link Joker, Shadow Paladin, Gold Paladin, Murakumo, Dark Regulars, Kagero, and Cray Elementals. So That's yeah, so, yeah, we're just gonna hop right into it with the two generation rares and two of the most hyped cards in Japan right now. And we're gonna start it off with Phantom Blaster Dragon, the Break Ride Edition, going in line with how Dragonic Overlord happened in set 15. You'll hear it in the other White Stepper file where I was talking about it. These cards did not need to get like made. Even Dragonic Overlord, there was no need to make a card with the same damn name. Oh, no, that's the same name. Eh. That's fun. Um, same name. The name is anyway, Phantom Blaster Dragon. Anyway, the, same name. Need anyway, the Phantom Blaster Dragon, um, it's a new break ride. Obviously, um, I think the only break ride that doesn't have Lord. It doesn't? Because they don't have Lord anymore. No need. Oh, oh yeah, Lord. Because, because they actually have clan fight rules now, so there's no point having Lord in a... Fair enough. Thing. No, all the all the break rides in the uh, Fighters Collection. Do they say yeah. they still have, have their 13k? Yeah, that? you're right. I guess at a main set then, it's the first yeah, break ride that doesn't have Lord. Um, but anyway, his effect is Little Break 4. Um, Soul Blast 3. When a Shadow Paladin rides this unit, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose your Vanguard. So end of turn, it gets plus 10,000. So standard break ride stuff. And then also the effect Auto Vanguard. Choose three of your rear guards and retire them. When this unit attacks the Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, draw two. Then choose three cards in your damage zone and turn them face up. Notice how they don't call it countercharging, despite countercharging being a revealed keyword. They revealed it though. Yeah. Um, turn it face up. Do it for set two. Yeah. Too soon. Choose three cards in your damage zone, turn them face up, and until the end of that battle, your opponent cannot call grade one or greater cards from their hand to guardian circle. So Delicious basically, guardian shields. glory. And its other ability, auto, choose one of your rear guards and retire it. When this unit is placed on Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for one card with Blaster in its name from your deck, reveal it to your opponent, and then add it to your hand and shuffle. So, obviously this card is meant to be played with uh, Phantom Blaster Overlord, exactly. which, if you don't remember, was a you don't remember cross... Right? Which is a cross ride unit, <laughs> which is a cross ride unit where as long as you had a card called Phantom Blaster Dragon, which this card is now named because it is a break ride variant, similar to Draconic Overlord, um, it is a 13k base with the ability that whenever it attacks the Vanguard, you can counter blast three Persona Blast until end of that until the end of that battle. It gained power plus 10,000 and critical plus one. That means so, with this guy, it's 20,000 power a critical. Yeah. You can't guard grid ones. You unflip the three and then yeah. you always get your Persona Blast yeah. when you ride him and kill you. You draw two. So basically, draw two, yeah. Yeah, so basically what this combo is: if you break ride Overlord, um, Phantom Blaster Overlord, that is, and attack, you counter blast three Persona Blast. And then after that, you Soul Blast 3. No, you Sack 3. Soul Blast 3 is on ride to get Oh, yeah, you on ride Soul Blast 3. Attack, Counter Blast 3, Persona Blast for plus 10 and a crit. So now it's 33, 2 crit. Then you Sack 3 of your rear guards, unflip 3, and then your opponent can't perfect shield it. So it's a 33, 2 crit for free. Before 
post. As well as with all the sound that tests this card, it's only really okay. I really want it to be good. I personally like the card, but... Hey, it didn't say it's a glory. It's just because you're, you're adding a new card with an old deck that doesn't really do much anymore. Yeah. It, can be, it can see fringe play with this. Exactly. It's, it's a fun... It's a fun hard to throw into like a fist. I think it'll solid. be interesting. I think it'll be interesting to see it fight. It'll be interesting to see it fight. Dragon Lord. Um, yeah, Dragonic. Um, don't oh, do don't don't break right. It's don't, a match. Don't don't break right. That'd be pretty interesting. I need more don't break rights though because I sold my other ones. We have four in the binder. Do we really again? Not now. Really expensive. No, no they're like ten bucks. No, that's that's we only have in the binder because Ace. Yeah. Yeah. People people are trying to be salty. There was a lot of. There was a lot of things about this unit. Um, people thinking it could be used with Abyss, which it, it can, yeah. but you have to really work for it, like playing the new starter exactly. that we'll get to it's, in this set. It's not a Revenger. You, like, it can absolutely, you can absolutely use this with Abyss, and that just wrecks, I think, games. If people find a way to abuse it with enough consistency, I think it could lead to problems. Just because, let's be honest, Brick Riding Abyss over this instead of Mordred is way more devastating if you can have enough units to sack for the Overlord ability on top of sacking for the Abyss ability. Yeah. But you would need the new starters, because I don't, I don't think anything else counts as a two-sack outlet. Karen does. As long as you have Blast Dragon. Which you would. Mm -hmm. So it's The actually, problem is they're also not Revengers, so they can't be sacked for it. You're not for Abyss. They, 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 they can be sacked for the Breakride ability. Yeah. So yeah. It could... It could be a problem, but we don't know yet. The set just came out in Japan, so we'll have to see what happens when their results start coming in to see if people are switching over from Mordred to this. We'll test it with the Myths yeah. at some time. Then we go on to the next uh, generation rare, which is Genesis Dragon Amnesty Messiah. Woo! Uh, Link Amnesty. Joker. This is for Link Joker. Uh, this is a stride, finally. <clears throat> this thing's ability is auto on Vanguard. Counterblast 1, when this unit attacks the Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do choose any of your choose any number of locked units, that's either you or your opponent's control. Choose any number of units and unlock them, and it gains power plus three thousand for every unlocked unit. And if three or more were unlocked, it gets critical plus one. So, in the same vein as Primavera and Chronos Command, the generation where Stride is just a solid unit that's not like totally game breaking or anything. Yeah. It's just a nice solid unit that does a cool effect that doesn't really. It, yeah, it has a good effect, but doesn't break anything. So it's not transport. Yeah. What transport was this? No, it's not <laughs> transport. So how do so how do you feel about this? Transport also, didn't break the game at all. But it was difficult. Tetra drive it did. No, tetra drive on a transport was gross. Yeah. It's like, did I die? Yet? Uh, I like this card. It, yes. gi it gives as, as a lead joker player. I kind of I kind of like it better in fucking Glendius because if, if if they tried like doing some. But like, has little shit, and you decide to lock some more of their stuff, you should be like, oh, no, I'll just unlock everything. Or mirror matches. Like, yeah. oh, I'm at, I'm at five locked units, so yeah. you're going to unlock my field. I've seen Link Joker, I've seen Link Joker players oh, yeah. in Japan talking about wanting this card specifically for the mirror match, because mm -hmm. even though Link Joker isn't that played in Japan, it's like you really only have... You're, you're always playing four uh, loop, and then the other four Genesis, the other four Shride units can pretty much be whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, I've seen, seen people playing... Um, maximum Seal Dragon, some play Blizzard, some play Atmos. All Ranch is a very solid card. I like it personally. Yeah, yeah it's pretty solid. It's a pretty good card. Do my, do my best to keep my units yeah. aloft. It's definitely better than Chronos Command and Primavera, which is unfortunate because... Yeah. And it's definitely not okay. game breaking either. That's a good, that's my hair. good point. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> but now we go on to the actual... <laughs> now we go on to the actual meat of the set and... A card that I don't think we'll see much play just because um, the obelisk exists. Plus, that saw last cost. Yeah. Anyway, and we go on to the actual um, Shadow Paladin, the new Shadow Paladin deck for G from the G series, and that is Sovereign Black Dragon Aura Geyser Dragon. It has finally been confirmed that it is Aura Geyser, not Aura Kaiser, as a translation was still kind of lacking in that department. Yeah. But it is Aura Geyser Dragon. English um, stands, though. Yeah. This thing's ability um, for uh, Stride, for Shadow Paladins, is Auto Vanguard, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, and uh, G Flip, which is choose a unit with the same name as it from your Generation Zone from the face up. And then choose two of your rear guards and retire them. When this unit attacks the Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, reveal the top two cards of your deck. This unit gets plus 5,000 power for each grade 1 or grade 0 revealed by this effect. 
and then you put those two cards in your hand. So essentially, you're doing a pseudo drive check five. Yeah. So how do you feel about this? I love this card. Dark Lord. <laughs> Why does it sound like Oracle? War Geyser? Like yeah. It? I love War Geyser. My issue, my issue honestly is its cost. It's it's a counter blast one, soul last one, then kill two. How do you feel about its SP flavor text? I love it. <laughs> Bathe with souls. Bruh. Black charisma. I will say it. this, it removes the need for Blizza in the Diablo yeah. decks. Because it could because last rock Diablo, you just G flip him to get your GB two for this or anything for Diablo. And obviously yeah. and obviously again, pseudo draw tech five. The issue is, again, you've probably seen it around. Your opponent will know five cards in your hand at that point. Because you obviously have to reveal the ones with the skill and that into your hand. Yeah. So. Five dry checks can be damning, though. I mean, at it's least a, you don't count super, the other three. But it's a so. super solid card. Yeah. Again, I won't see it much because Diablo being played. And or it'll just be played within Diablo. Yeah. And then just be like, oh, advantage, and then Diablo. But with all the retiring, <clears throat> it is good to know that your stride breaker helps mitigate that. And his, his name is Sovereign Dragon. Clarence Sword Dragon. So we have more Mordred motifs coming in. Um, this guy's ability, first off, is Act Vanguard once per turn, Generation Break 2. Choose two of your rear guards and retire them. This unit gains power plus 10,000 and critical plus 1,000 of turn. So basically, just a. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's a little bit of a cheaper uh, Phantom Blaster Dragon ability from set 4. Yeah. But you have a little bit more restriction on when you can use it. Also, Dragon wasn't once per turn, if I remember correctly. No, you use Dragon as much as you fucking please. Yeah, as long as you had enough to pay for it, you can <clears> keep doing it. As long as you have the two and the three units. Yeah. But his other ability is Auto Vanguard, Counter Blast 1. During the turn, one of your G units strides upon this unit, you may pay up the cost. If you do search your deck for up to one grade one or less uh, card from your deck, call it to Rear Guard, and then that uh, unit gains power plus 2,000. Then shuffle your deck, and then yeah. <coughs> and, and a 2,000 last one on the turn, obviously. Yeah. I like this unit. I'm kind of upset that it's really difficult with sword breaking the deck due to Kaiser's Soul Blast. Yeah. But I'm also upset because this you unit won't see play. You do have a Marvel clone now, so it does kind of help yeah. though. I'm also this this unit won't see play because the best way to play Diablo is with Abyss, so you can just play the Abyss deck and throw Diablo. I still think I still think hands down this unit is better than Blaster Dark Diablos. <laughs> I think it's better than Blaster Dark Diablos. Yeah. <laughs> I think this card's better than Blaster Dark Diablos. The problem is, is that. Phantom Blaster Diablos is a thing. Yeah. Again, that's why I'm super sad about this card. You won't see anything. You just play the Abyss Chain and then Diablo. Yeah. So. A really good card that's just super overlooked because Shadow Paladin yeah. just has something better. Right it's, now. it's a shame. And then we go from a card that won't see play because of better cards to a card that won't see play because it's straight garbage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As our Gold Phantom player smiles with glee. Whoa. And that is Golden mm. Dragon Glee. And that is Golden Dragon Spear Frowns. Scorn. Spear Cross Dragon. Frowns so, in English. So, so, bef so before I read the ability, Mike, do you want to vent? I'm kind of glad I had a roll of Paladins, though. Get shot in Spanish. The only thing I'm so hot is I'm pretty sad right now. <laughs> he's, he's, up a, he's up a Welsh lore. Get shot yeah. in Welsh. This card, this card is just... Oh, Gurgit. Really? This, 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 card is, this card is just very... He's, he's Anyway, this, this thing's ability is auto, counter blast two, and then persona flip. So choose a cross spear face down in your G zone, turn face up. Don't do it, um, When this unit is placed on Vanguard, if the number of face, if the number of face up cards in your G zone is one or more, so this can be your first stride and have an effect. Correct? Yeah, you got G flip them. Yeah. When it's placed on Vanguard, if the number of face up cards in your G zone is one or more, you may, you may pay the cost. No, as we want more face up here, Jesus, when you use the effects, I know you can't be your first drive. Oh, that's sad. Oh, I see, yeah. We're having fly issues right now, so please. Yeah, excuse us. If you hear <laughs> yeah. a giant clapping sound, how's <laughs> going fly. on? That's just Brandon looking at cake. We're, we're, we're in a <laughs> war right now. <laughs> anyway, if the number of units you have in your G-Zone uh, face up is one or more, you may pay the cost. So yeah, it does have to be your second stride. Um, if you do, look at the top five cards of your deck, search up for among them up to one card, or search your search for up to one card among them for each face-up card in your G-Zone and call them separate rear guards. So essentially, it's very similar to uh, Garmor from from Garmor from set uh, 12. Do you know? But instead of just repeating the effect until you were satisfied, um, you can only call units equal to the amount of face-up units in your G-Zone. So, you look at the top five, 
If you have five face up, you call five, obviously. But that's pretty good. That's really that's a really unique interaction for superior calling. Yeah, but it's, it's just slower normal. Yeah. The problem is, that, and that's the problem right there. The, the the words the words slower Garmore feels I, terrible. Remember set twelve? Thank you. Little Carl and Tell Wolf playing their way to Garmore. No, no, no one went remembers to set attempt. Twelve. Everyone started playing in G. to fight raging form dragon. Yeah, he lost. Now the better form called Abyss, and it's even more broken. And so it's still the same outcome. It, this card is just not good. It takes too long yeah. to set up. I think this is the cheapest here. triple rare in the set, according to the Japanese. I think it's like. I think it's like literally 180 yen, which I believe translates to right around like a dollar thirty. It's like a dollar. Yeah, it's like a dollar twenty thirty. Yeah. So for a soda, yeah, you like, have your base triple rare grade three. Blood. Yeah, the card is just not good compared to um, what other things. Yeah. Liberators. Liberators. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they uh, pretty much liberators. I've, I've heard some people call this the worst stride probably in the game right now. Yeah. That's a Persona flipper. Um, I think it's the worst Persona Flip? Yeah, stride? the worst Persona Flipper stride. I was gonna say, there's some pretty bad ones. Yeah. Mystic Lukier. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you believe that there's some pretty bad strides in the game, yeah. like Mystic Lukier. Um, yeah, Crossbeard Dragon is just not that good. Which is unfortunate because the next card, which is the um, Stride Breaker for Royal Paladin, or Gold Paladin, isn't terrible. It's just, if he was better, if, if Gold Spear was better, the deck would be a little more... Uh, Viable? Playable, yeah. And this is Knight of Rising Sunshine, uh, Gergut? Gergit. Gergit. Ger something or other. Yeah, Gergit. Um, his first ability, um, his first ability is actually pretty unique. It's Auto Vanguard Generation Break 2. Uh, Counter Boss 1, Soul Boss 1. At the beginning of the guard step of the battle that this unit is attacked. I did that. You just punched my star. That's trying to fly. <laughs> sorry, guys. Just yeah, sorry. Again. Anyway, his ability is Generation Break 2, Counter Boss 1, Soul Boss 1. At the beginning of your guard step that this unit is attacked. You may pay the cost if you do. Look at the top four cards of your deck. Search up to one unit among them. Call it to generation or call it to guardian circle at rest and shuffle your deck. Huh. So, um, one of the one of the few units that has a generation break ability that can be used even if you stride that turn, because his generation break ability only activates during during your. Um, <laughs> he flew away like <laughs> like a minute ago. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you all, you all are like talking about his ability. Sorry, yeah, so he, he can be yeah. used basically on your opponent's turn. Um, it allows you to call units to strike. Uh, note that the um, newer generation, the newer generation perfect shields only work if you call them to Guardian Circle from your hand. Yeah. So you can't get a perfect shield with this thing's, or you can get a perfect shield with this thing's effect, but you can't discard to activate it. So you yeah. just put it on the Guardian Circle. Yeah, unless you want to use. Yeah, unless you use Liberator once, like Mark and stuff like that, which is what I'm thinking a lot of people are probably going to do. Most likely. Pretty much do it, I think. Hasn't there only been one other Vanguard that has the ability to actually interact with an opponent's attack? Um, there's been a two. Etain. Like, I'll show you the auto mark from what Vanguard's. And Etain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Etain was like the... Etain allowed you to kill an opponent's monster on their turn. As long as Etain was being attacked. Yeah. Because I know there was the one that negs the Vanguard by, like, what? Ten. Yeah, it was, it was sure five. It was five and ten. That's sure you gave him a dollar lord. Yes. Yes. And then, and then his other ability is auto vanguard cattle boss one during the turn that um, one of your G units stride. You may pay the cost if you look at the top four cards of your deck. Search for one among them. Call it to rear guard. It gets power plus two thousand. So basically, his stride when you stride over him, you kind of get um, a prominence score ability. Huh. That's pretty. When you stride over him, you get a prominence score ability, yeah. which kind of helps with um, golden spear because you can. After him, you can stride, counter blast one, call one, then counter blast two, G flip, call two. Yeah. That's not too bad. I mean, that's field presence. You're, you're, you're spending, you're paying three, though, to call three, but they're kind of random because they're off the top. Yeah. Instead of just Which searching. Is, but they're top X, so yeah. it's a lot more yeah. versatility. Which is what golds are generally good at doing. But if you use the stand triggers, couldn't you just replace it right after that? Oh, uh, no, because you need liberators. Oh, liberators. Yeah. So, yeah, it is pretty randomized, so I guess. Yeah, so Mike, how do you feel about the, uh, we know how you feel about Gold Spear, he's not that good, but, like I said, this unit's actually not terrible. Um, really like the Onshot effect, that the Gold Power wants to do, kind of allows one, do a unit, do it too. Hmm. Not terrible. I absolutely, I hate his GB2. It's the soul boss cost. It's the deck you play, wasn't it? Oh, the GB2. Yeah, I can't play on Flipping Perfects. 
cows won't soul boss won't they can't really very well do the drift. It's why it's a good thing you have the double rare stride at least from Fighter's Collection because he's actually a little more playable with this guy for sure. It it allows some kind of things. I personally like him very much. I'll build him, but I don't really like him very much. He'll build him for you. It'll be cheap to make at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Build him for him and do nothing but win with it. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we get to go. Then we go with the one card I get to talk about for this set, and it's not much to talk about because I really don't like this card. Nobody does. It. It's fucking terrible. There's a lot of people who actually like this card that he's actually really playable, and I just don't see it. Um, anyway, this is Divine Dragon Knight Mustafa for Kagura. Mufasa. Yeah. Uh, this guy's ability. This guy's ability is act. This guy's ability is act uh, once per turn, counter boss one, and then choose a face down card in your G zone to flip a face up. No, you don't have to pick. You don't have to choose itself, which is why a lot of people say it's playable. You don't have to play four of these. You can you can just play one. Um, but the problem is, people, you have to play at least another one because of his other ability. And I'll just tell you why. Like it can turn, it can flip up anything, but you want to flip up more copies of him because uh, when you pay this cost, you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards, retire it. Then choose one of your units for each face-up card name, Dragon Knight, uh, Divine Dragon Knight Mustafa in your G-Zone. Until end of turn, those units get auto rearguard Vanguard. When this unit attack hits a Vanguard, choose a card from your damage zone and turn it face up. So, so generic damage on a flipper? Yeah. So basically that kills you. it's similar to the on-hit ability that Kagro already has, but the on-hit is instead to unflip, basically to the first time is basically to reimburse the cost you paid to guarantee getting off a retire. So it's like a weird Belcosity dragon that doesn't have to hit. It doesn't have to hit to unflip. So it's like a kind of a Belcosity. It gives a yeah. Belcosity effect essentially. Yeah. What you do is you would shred it over Blade Master, counter boss one, kills him with Blade Master, then counter boss one again for Mustafa's ability, unflip, uh, flipping face up on Mustafa. Choose another Vanguard to retire, or choose another rear guard to retire. And then you would give your vanguard or whatever rear guard you think is more likely to hit against your opponent the ability of Belkosity Dragon. Whenever it hits, unflip. Unflip. So you kind of reimburse yourself. Yeah, that's the thing though. If your base is getting the cost back, which is the ability to cost you to flip for two it. retires and getting it back. That's not too bad. Well, no, no, because one of them is from Blade Master. You can't reimburse oh, his. Okay. But, but the thing is though, if you have, if you go Mustafa, flip up Mustafa, and then ride a stride Mustafa next turn, and then flip Mustafa. Then you give you have three Mustafas in your G zone when you use his ability. So, you so your whole front row has more cost to dragon. But the thing is though, is even with that, would you rather be doing that or would you rather be doing the ability book uh, Psalm from Fire's Collection, which is whenever one of your opponent's units is retired, you can count one retired another one. Yeah, you're or, right. Or, or, route, do or it. even Route Flare, just retiring entire columns for no cost. Yeah. Visibility. So I guess it's kind of a niche generic stride. Yeah, like if you can't afford root uh, route know. flares, which would be is weird because route flares are like ten bucks right now. Yeah. Like it's good, but I need to know this book. You just play this instead. I, I just don't see why this guy is A a triple rare and B why people think he's good. He's not he's just so you well, get the ability like to book cost you flip two. Yeah. They need to put that <laughs> like like I see where he has purpose but I just do not like him at all. I guess they need a degenerate triple rare to put in there. Yeah. Just to say that they had another triple rare. Yeah. Honestly, minus killing the field, what are they going to do? They're one guy that kills a column. And basically, that's one of the only cards Kagura really got in this set, so we can pretty much skip over Kagura for most of the stuff. But there, there is um, a double rare and two rares that need to be talked about when it comes to Kagura. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, the next triple rare is the Return of the Ninjas, which is Murakumo. Oh, baby, and they got... They're playable, that's all I can really ask for. They, they got a pretty <laughs> spicy unit, but how good he's going to be is still greatly debated. Is this the restandard? Yeah. yeah. Later. It's, still, it's still greatly debated because he can be good, but he can also just be. He can also just not do Mike anything sometimes. Mike fucking hates this guy. And that is Ambush, Demonic Stealth Dragon, Hamura Raider, uh, Murakumo Stride. His ability is Counter Blast 2, and it choose a face down unit with his name and G Zone, turn a face up. If the number of face up units in your G Zone is two or more, he gets Drive Check minus one, so we know where this is heading. And the ability Auto. At the end of the battle that this unit attacks a vanguard, choose one of your rear guards. If you do, you may return, or you may choose three rear guards that have the same name as a unit you chose. Note that the noted unit you chose can be one of the three you choose afterwards. They all have to have the same name. Okay. You choose three of your rear guards with the same name as that unit and return them to the deck. If three units are returned this way, stand this unit and shuffle your deck. 
So Murakumo just got their first Dronautic Overlord in. In their theme. No, it's not really an end. It's a restander. It's just a basic restander. Unfortunately, I hate the mechanic, but it's something that clans need nowadays to be viable. And me and Brandon were speaking about it. The thing about Raider is that he doesn't mind his hand too much. Yeah. Me and Brandon were talking about it. Like, what if there was a way you could call three units of the same name? I'll figure that way out. One way or another, I'll fucking figure it out. Now, if that happens. Normally, if you're not. Normally, if you're not discarding units to restand, you are sacking your own units to restand. Yeah. But this one doesn't really sack it; it puts them to the bottom and shuffles. Um, the biggest problem I have with this is that you can return. I don't like that you can return triggers for. It. Yeah, that's a really. If you have a dead hand, you S- just sacking. Try it. Like for abyss, sacking triggers to restand it is one thing, but putting triggers back in the deck to restand it is another. Yeah. Like if you just happen to have three heals in your hand late game. And you call three heals, you put three back to restand it. That just seems like you get a free restand. You're, you're, you're completely it. mitigating any disadvantage you just had by getting rid of three yeah. tank shields in your hand by putting three heals back in the well, deck. The point of Marakumo is if anything is out of your deck, if, if more than one unit is like out of the deck, you know you can't clone it. Right. So cloning becomes moot. So well, yeah, it's it made throw units back in the deck, and you're still able to clone afterwards. But yeah. Spencer didn't bring up a good Mike's, point. Mike's doing some. If He's you're too. if you're going to lose. You could easily just strive, like just, let's say in the most generic situation, you have four four triggers, maybe three. You have three triggers, you top deck a stride assist. You stride into that, you call those triggers, you put them back. Well, you might all be the same trigger. Yeah, it, it could be, be the same, same, same name. Like, yeah. All of them would be the same trigger. But if you just happen to have those, you basically be going plus one from the two drive checks, and you could hit those triggers. It's one of those things you kind of have yeah. to... But you could easily sack someone by doing yeah. that. You have to kind of bend your hand the entire game to make it to where you are doing that. Uh, one thing I don't like about this guy is if, let's say I do have two heal triggers, play a heal trigger, play a heal trigger, play the stand trigger, put the stand back in the deck, clone the heal trigger once, and I can put all three of the heal triggers back as my next time. Right. But I was missing the heal. And if it is that late in the game and your deck is thin, you've just put another element in, I do I want this to hit, and you just put heals and criticals back. Personally, my belief is this card is really freaking stupid. Stupid good or stupid bad? Stupid good. I think if they give it support to where you can call during the battle phase if something is cloned, maybe a different three units. They kind of do awesome. they kind of do in their um, Amber clone, the one that when it's boosted, kind of also won't do mechanic. It clones itself. Yeah, but it clones itself though. It doesn't clone other things. Because we cloned other things and you would be able to do it. Uh, right. Attack three times. Basically, what I've, I've seen people I've seen what I've seen people say is that you would attack if you had two of them. You put both here. One of them would be for not, but you would like attack a rear guard with this one, attack Vanguard with this one. Kind of also want to call one under Vanguard and then attack twenty six, and then return those three and to the deck stand. and then restand them. Maybe just as a way to be able to do it easier. That's not that bad. You don't nag too much. Uh-huh. The only problem, the only problem I have with this card is that I don't like that you can put triggers back in the deck with its effect. Yeah, they. That, that that's the only thing. I'm, other than that, it's a pretty good restander in a deck that real a clan that really needed something, especially to for, make them playable. And while even though it's a restander, which is funny because usually restanding is one of the more like usually, usually the second or third most broken mechanic in the game. Um, this still doesn't make them really highly yeah. competitive though. They're, they're 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 certainly playable, but they're not tier one at all. Like, they're, they're still going to get smashed by Shadow Paladins, Royal Paladins, Nurakami, Aqua Force. Yeah. I, to be honest, I think they might have to give Murakumo a bit more support because one... Aqua Force is no longer meta. One I'll set say. a year is like one... In what, Japan or I just set three, Aqua Force gets pushed out of the meta. In what, Japan? I don't GB? think so. In the game in general, as of set three, Aqua Force is pushed out of the game. I don't think so. Very much so. There's too much retiring, there's too much... Go ahead and keep going. So what's wrong with you? I don't have a conversation with Daniel. Fair enough. You and your Lambros hatred. We finally, Aquas no, finally gets something. No, he's broken. He didn't need to be there. have very different opinions about this, and it's not really what the discussion is about. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, we're going to move on from Hammer Raider. A uh, good card in a clan that desperately needed support. Um, it maybe could have been tweaked a little here, a little there, to maybe make it not have the ability to do some things, but overall. It's a fine card. It's one of the more, I think, fair restanders they've made recently. Yeah, it's pretty balanced. Because it, it feels like it has the, the card itself power, like as a card, 
feels like as powerful as Vic Plasma or um, Dope. Or but it has dope, its, uh, Ace. But it has its more opponent. But but, but it has it. But it has its own feel to it. Yeah. The problem is, is that in a situation, the deck of Murakumo is not as strong as the Nova Grappler deck or the Kagura deck. And definitely not a situational because if you don't have yeah. the three units, you can't do it. So. Yeah. And now we go on to um, Link Joker Triple Rare. So we're going back to the Dark Lord, and that is Nebula Dragon. Big crunch dragon. But can you see why kids all the taste of cinnamon so crunch? Oh yes. Oh, he absolutely sees why. Oh yes, this crunch. This guy's ability is act once per turn, count the last one. Choose a face down card uh, named Big Crunch in your G zone. Turn a face up. And by the way, I had a convulsion when I first heard about this card because I'm so tired of this mechanic. But at least, but at least he's, but at least he's not a Starvader. So. Yeah. Just try him over, over a Starvader. I know, but still. Um, if the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is two or more, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and then lock all of your opponent's rear guards in the same column, and right. then Omega lock that column. So it's, this is once again me really, 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 really hating that Root Flare was in set one, because it has now been... Root, Root Flare has been power creeped by everything else. Yeah. Like, Root Flare is nice and simple and all, but we look at what everything else does. It's like, not the only reason why Root Flare is still playable is because it's free. If Root Flare was kind of last one, G Flip to retire a column, he would be like fucking terrible. Yeah. The fact that he's free though still makes him playable compared to what a lot of other cards do. But this one is pretty bad because it locks out yeah. a column for a you, you, whole turn. Yeah, if you, if you compare Root Flare to other free stride units that G Flip, Lambros, X Tiger, um, Managarm. He's kind of weird. Oh, is he? Oh yeah, he does. But yeah. he gives he has a lot of benefits. What are other or even Conquest Dragon? Like what Root Flare does isn't nearly as impactful as what they do. Yeah. Lambros. As I said, Lambros, X Tiger, Conquest Dragon. What they do is way more in fact impactful than what Root Flare does. Yeah. So it's already being pushed out. Same blow. Same blow, yeah, same blow, he's free, yeah. I forgot about him. I didn't even know he was free. I almost said Ragnarok, but I remember that he does have a counter lost one, which is very fair. <laughs> I didn't even know Saint Blow had a counter blast until I got smashed by him one day. No, he doesn't. Saint Blow's completely free, just a flip. I was just like, are you what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so Dark Lord, how do you feel about Nebula Crunch in the whole grand scheme I of Messiahs or whatnot? Yeah. I know you're I know you're playing Messiahs and the uh, Glendios loop deck, so how do you how do you feel about Big Crunch? Every time you say that I'm thinking <laughs> you're like trying I play to play two of them in my Messiah deck. Hmm? Only because you want units mm -hmm. locked. And obviously it make locks them, so if you don't unlock them, they kind of stay locked for a little while. Do you think this guy could see play in Glendios? No, not Glendios. Oh, I'm only saying because he Omegas. He does He does Omega lock, which does help Glendios. The problem is Omega loop also Omega locks everything. But he has to wait, but he has to wait till 5 damage, though. He doesn't. That's still like 4 units, you need 5. Yeah. yeah it's really Omega locks one column. Alright, now we go on to the last... two of my... Now we're going to go on to the last triple of the set, and it's the same Shang's Knight here, so he can fanboy over this thing like, real, real hard. I want to hear this one. I haven't heard it yet. Um, this is another one of those real controversial cards in the set. Um, hey, this guy's also free. Think about what he does compared to Root Flare. It's like 15 soul. There's a cost there. It's just not... Well, he doesn't have a cost. He has a heavy restriction, though. My is it? Ultimate Yeah, you'll, you'll see. Um, this is... Um, Dark Irregular's main boss stride, and that is the one who is abhorrent, Gels de Reyes. Abhorrent. Abhorrent, Gels de Reyes. And this guy's ability is act Vanguard once per turn. Choose a face down card with his name in your G zone, turn a face up. If the number of cards in your soul is 10 or more, he gets. If the number of cards in your soul is 10 or more, this unit gains power plus 10,000 until end of turn. Mm -hmm. Then, if the number of cards in your soul is 15 or more, this unit gets auto vanguard. When this unit attacks the vanguard till the end of that battle, your opponent cannot call grade one or greater to rear guard. If the number of face up cards in your G zone is two or more, this unit gets critical plus one. Uh, all this delicious glory. So if it's your second stride and you have 15 plus cards in your soul, super hard. It attacks 36 to crit before boost, boost and your opponent can't perfect guard it. Glory. Yet again, another card that Butcher needs to learn that Stop having 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 yeah. a, a certain number of attacks, having a certain amount of soul, or it's not it's not even that. I, I will cost. I will reiterate something that I keep saying. It's not even so much cost anymore. Either put a glory effect, or give it critical plus one. 
Yeah, don't, don't yeah. do both. Yeah. The problem is they're getting all these free things because they have to have a certain amount right. of cards installed. Because it's just so hard for Dark Regular don't, to soul charge that. Yeah, much. don't don't do both. Do not give a glory effect or even a Tom effect. The same with making yeah. all and, and give a critical plus one. Bad. The same way of making all the forces stuff free. Guard, reaching, reaching the fourth attack plus yeah. is just so difficult. Guard restrictions are already hard enough to guard these days because of how hyper aggro the game is. But 36 with a critical Yeah, 36 glory. two crit that, with a glory effect on it. Yes. And that's before boost. Don't forget, this is a clan that has Doreen. Yeah, Doreen with the throw. Imagine soul charging six before that. Yeah, you, you could literally have a Vanguard column that literally can't be guarded. The only thing that really stood up to this thing is fucking right. Vanguard. And you have people have experience with that. And you have people who are playing this with Amon, with the new Amon yeah. starter, where you tap it and give your Vanguard, or a, car, a unit with Amon in its name, uh, plus 1,000 for every card in your soul. So the, the thing, this thing just be impossible to guard unless with critical plus one, unless you throw away like every eight, like, like eight all, cards in your hand with intercepts. Yeah, like every heal trigger, like every trigger in your hand. And then that's not including Dorans behind other. If there are multiple Dorans behind multiple Dorian, 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 Dorian both yeah, behind other things. And if they hit critical triggers near the rear guard, you're, there's no way you're guarding them. We were at sixteen. It's yeah. kind of like when you have break right yeah. like, The only it just gets the only good thing about this is that because of triple drive, because of hyper aggro, because of everything like that. Um, I think by the time Dark Regulars these days gets uh, 15 cards in their soul, they'll be dead. They're just going to be out of so many resources because 15 cards in soul. Think of how many of those could be triggers, could be perfect shields. They could it could actually hurt them sometimes by them not being able to guard your stuff, depending on what you're doing. Like right. Vanguard, Vanguard's obviously a one v one battle. Yeah. So you can obviously be doing stuff that because they're soul charging the wrong cards, they could die before. They could do this kind of effect yeah, to where hit, it could beat you. They hit critical mass, and then it's just the so many great threes. I don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind yeah. this guy personally because it gets. Dark checking great out. threes is always something that can kill you, and there's nothing you can really do about it, unfortunately. Yeah. Is gold pile a reason to be in the set because they obviously don't call them normally to hand? They yeah. Tip, they check top X. Oh, I'm gonna get this perfect guard right here. I'm not normally calling. I'm able to use it. Yeah, that's one thing people yeah. actually like about the new gold pile guy because if you play marks, you can perfect yeah. shield from the top of the deck, which gets around all these glory effects. It, it gives gold pile a purpose in the. Set. So that's why I don't really mind this guy. Yeah. So those are the triple rares. Um, if we had to put them in order of best to worst, it would probably go uh, gold. Cro it would go uh, spear cross dragon. Then probably Mustafa. You mean worst to best. Yeah, yeah worst to worst. best. Yeah, Be uh, worst to best. Oh yeah, best unit. Yeah. <laughs> it would probably be spear cross. Mike to say something. Yeah, it probably be spear cross uh, Mustafa. Um, gear. How do you say it? Gear good. It's French. Gear get. Um, then you probably have Big Crunch, um, Clarence Sword, uh, Hammer Rider, Gilles Reyes, and then Aura Geyser. Probably Aura Geyser. Nearly more than most Aura Geyser is the best one in my opinion, just because it's easier to pull off. And drive checking five is a thing. Yeah. Like even if the first two, even if the R triggers, you're not getting the trigger benefit from it. You are still getting the plus five. That's super hard to it is pretty reliable power yeah. spike, right? There. Then we're going to see if we can't power through the grade twos real quick. Uh, first off, we have Karma Collector, which is a uh, Shadow Powder and Perfect Shield. Big perfect shield. Shadow yeah. Powder and Perfect Shield, you don't know the effect. Yeah, Generation Perfect Shield. If you have a when you use it, if you have a copy of itself in the graveyard, you're going to flip one. Um, and on top of Karma Collector, we'll also go down all the other um, Perfect Shields in the set. Um, Gold Paladin got one, Holy Mage, um, Prideri. Well, there you go. Uh, Murakumo got one. Its name is Stealth Fiend White Heron. You also have a new Link Joker Perfect Guard for all of you who are still struggling to find Prometheums in this day and age. Well, they got one just play evil. You should, you should get it for the trial day also. So. Yeah. How much were they? And that is uh, Flower Blooming. Prometheum was like max. Like, yeah, and 25. that is a Flower Blooming in the Vacuum Cosmosalis. Cosmolis. <laughs> yeah, and then the Dark Irregular Perfect Shield's name is just simply Flagbreaker. Flagbreaker. That's its name. It is flag breaker. Yeah, I love that flag breaking. Yeah, so there's a lot of perfect shields <laughs> in this set. Um, then you keep going down the list. We have a holy mage. Um, Twill. That's what? No, that's um, Pradiri. You have holy mage Twill, which is the gold paladin uh, amber clone. This unit's it's basic. It's basically when it attacks on it boost, attacks, attacks on boost, and it's a. One. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Agavali's ability. We, we, we use it as clan mechanics. He's obviously using yeah. clan mechanics. So you counterblast one, check top three, call a unit. 
to a rear guard circle, put the rest on the bottom anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, solid unit, once again, it's... It really go, go, gold pile, double rare. Gold, pile, gold, pile, gold pile, pile's biggest problem is this, is that gold spirit wasn't good enough. Every, everything else are solid units. They're not bad, but they're not like super powerhouse, but it's just the the stride kind of fell. It really helps the double rare grade too. The double rare and fire squad. Yeah. Then we have um, the only Kagro double rare in this set, and that is Dragon Knight um, Janat. Janat is the um, heart the heart thumb clone for uh, Blade Master. Whenever you're Vanguard with Blade Master in its name, attacks as long as it's on the field, you can put it in the soul to draw one and give your Vanguard plus five thousand power. Um, pretty they solid. Pretty solid now in a Blade Master deck if you're not running. Um, Legions or anything, so you don't care about a trigger going into your soul for an effect. Yeah. Um, gives uh, it gives um, Stride Kagero decks um, a way to draw, and it's also pretty good in late game because you have to remember Blade Master Generation Break Two ability is very relevant in the late game because it's the best thing they have to close out games because eventually they're going to run out of guards to guard a, a sixteen two critical. Attack all the time. Yeah, plus the five you get from the unit that goes in the soul. Yeah, just put him one him in the unit. You have a twenty-one two crit. That's uh, fifteen for a one pass, twenty for a two pass. Eventually, you're gonna run out not of shields. Boost. Yeah. No, and that's not counting boosters. So, so. if you have um, go kill behind him and you have a twilight arrow, you're looking at a thirty-one two crit. That's so, good. yeah, very very valid columns. Um, then after that, you have something near and dear to Brandon's heart. He's very happy he got. Uh, plays out of Magatsu Storm. And that is Covert Demonic Dragon Magatsu Typhoon. I have to pull this man up to read him because I have no idea what his effect is. The text probably going to be one of building him. Uh, if you do. I was just going to share the card. Yeah. So this is um, um this is the uh, Legion Revival for this set. Apparently we're going to have one in every set, it appears. Looks that way. I believe it. I believe they said something about <laughs> a, they said something about a recent Vanguard stream in that um, for the generation sets, they are trying to do at least one, at least one percent, at least one Legion revival per set. Um, it's pretty funny seeing Magatsu Storm for this particular set, I'm considering not Dragon Empire clones. Considering um, all the different clans that were in this one, um, you could have, you you could have had um, an incandescent Lezel, an incandescent Lion Ezel hmm. revival, which I think a lot of people were expecting after Vermilion. That would have been pretty interesting. Um, we had a lot of people who wanted to be Chaos Breaker or do because oh, they hate this game. And they want be, to die be, because if you look, it goes cross Vermilion. You're looking at Kai boss units for each uh, season. Bill was just Dragon Empire for for each season, and then season three. <laughs> yeah, for little we know, it was only Dragon Empire. Yeah. Season miles. season three, set three. You're looking at either Rebirth. You're oh, looking at either yeah, Rebirth. Empire. Uh, Dragonic Descendant or Chaos Breaker. Because the people who like Season 3 Link Choker and learn to be playable again are terrible people and want this game to die. Please, no more yeah, Chaos Breaker. We don't, we don't, need, so we don't need Chaos Breaker in this game anymore. No, that card was we have to deal with Omega Glendios. It's bad enough that Omega Glendios is still playable. Oh, but anyway, this... Yeah. But anyway, this unit legions with Covert Demonic Dragon Magatsu Storm. Um, if you don't remember what his, his effect does, I don't blame you. He was never played. I blame him. <laughs> This unit's ability is that when this unit um, when this unit performs Legion, choose up to five of your rear guards with Magatsu in its card name, oh and they gain power plus five thousand and the boost ability. So um, that's Great very boost. That's a uh, uh, very that's um, uh, very relevant. I heard because I have a question: When you perform Legion, do you get off Magatsu's ability? Because it's not being called to Vanguard; it's being Legion to Vanguard. You're writing it. Yes. Legion's second being called as a. Legion is being rogue. What are you guys talking about? Oh my god, the uh, Great Two's ability. You will not get it, you're on the Legion. But you ride the Great Two's the same thing with Blaster Blade. What are you guys talking about? I must be missing something, what? I don't want you to perform Legion. Yeah, yeah. You will not get the effect, you're on the Grade Three. Right, you will not activate the sec the Grade Two Magatsu, Magatsu game. You're not riding, you're just performing Legion. Because they have to keep Markuma awful. There's no way you would have it! You're not writing a card. That wouldn't make sense because you're not writing on top of it. You're, you're, whatever, keep going. you're calling a new unit to Vanguard. I hate this game anyways. Mm -hmm. But anyway, all the Magatsu cards because this all the Magatsu rear guards that you have gain power plus five thousand and the boost ability. So if you have if you have Magatsu Magatsu, then you basically have what, a thirty two column? Yeah. That's a thirty two because it boosts. The grade twos are nine K, they get plus five, they're fourteen boosters. Yeah. If you which is which is pretty solid. Isn't there like a Joker unit that lets you do this? 
Um, um, there was two of them. There was Hafnium from Fire's Collection and uh, Reverse Cradle. Yeah, it lets you boost. Oh, I no, no, it was just editing Starvade. It was just, just Hafnium. Yeah. yeah, it was just him. He gave all of your reverse units a boost and intercept. That's really, that's pretty interesting that they're giving that, but it's a pretty cool mechanic because it can yeah. clone anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, this unit's ability is Act Vanguard uh, once per turn. Choose a card. Um, this is not a Legion ability, by the way. Um, once per turn, choose a card from your hand and discard it. Search your deck for one card with the same name as a unit on Vanguard and call to Rigor. And then at the end of the turn, any unit you call with this ability um, is returned to your hand. Hmm. So you can call a Magatsu, uh, Storm or Typhoon, or any of the grade two, or no. You can call a Storm or a Typhoon to rear guard. And if it was the same turn that you perform Legion, because no, yeah, because you can use that ability first and then perform Legion, you can put a 16k attacker or 16k booster onto the field. Pretty solid. It is pretty solid. Um, this card seems good. Um, Brandon, what's your opinion on this card? Because I know you were looking forward to this pretty much. It's alright. I like the strike better. But, uh, the energy always going to fight against the game. Well, it's a solid card. I really kind of like the effect. I like I like the break strike better. Yeah, so we can it just the better. Should be a better. Yeah. It should be Rogue always, always seem better. I see a lot of people wanted to build this as a nice fun deck because it is... It feels like Vermilion. The Vermilion Legion. Because it... I think everyone's just, just kind of upset because they're not all broken like the Cross was when it came out, but it's only because it what it legioned with, not because of what that card yeah, did. Yeah, it was dope, not Cross. It's, no, yeah. it had not, the, the, the Cross word in the name. Well, that's nothing like that. Cross was a. Was the, anything the fact that grab one of the units on Vanguard and Legion? That was the thing. Yeah, well, that was the thing. Cross wasn't the broken part. It was the fact that it, it had a dope. It, 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 it had dope attached to it. Well, I only thought you'd grab Cross and Infinite Legion. Infinite Legion was broken. Yeah. Well, well it's it sustained time. its own persona blast, so it's like. Just gonna go sleep in your own? Mind if I play uh, Universe? Ah, it's Universe. And then, uh, next double rare for Murakumo is. Um, Fath Fathoming Stealth Rogue uh, Yasui. That's to be rude. There's so much purple in Murakumo. <laughs> He's a ninja. Oh, he's <laughs> purple. Ninjas aren't purple. They wear bright orange and blue jumpsuits. That's not a ninja. <laughs> That's not a ninja. That's an autistic kid. That's an autistic kid who got a fucking television show. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. <laughs> Believe that. Ninjas are angsty with eye powers. Yeah. That is an emo who walked onto a set. It's closer to a ninja than Naruto was, though, let's be yeah, honest. At least, he, at least he did ninja things. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this is the uh, stride bait. Like I said, this is the stride bait for, this is the stride bait for Murakumo. Its ability is auto once per turn, generation break two. Um, when your rear guard is put into your deck due to an effect from one of your card effects, you can search your deck for one card with the same name and call it to rear guard. So uh, this unit's actually pretty... That effect's actually pretty interesting. Because of the way sequencing... Because of the way sequ sequencing works in terms of end of turn effects, you can choose to um, remove your stride unit first, and then resolve abilities in which units that you clone that turn go to the bottom of the deck, and then activate your generation break ability to call them back to the field. It's kind of like the weird sequencing with Great Nature. In their first Legion, you could order things in a way where you wouldn't get dead draws, because you put stuff back, then you redraw them, and then you're allowed to draw and search for your Legion mate at the same time. Yeah. It was a complex process, but it it does matter in the end. Yeah. And then its other ability was Auto Vanguard Counterblast 1. During your turn, when a G unit strides over this unit, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your rear guards, search your deck for two units with the same card name as that unit, call them the separate rear guards, and then shuffle your deck. At the end turn, they go to the bottom of the deck in any order. So once again, that ability can also be affected by his generation break ability. So you would call a grade 2 and call one of them, or call a grade 1. Basically, this is what allows um, Hammer Raider to be really devastating. Because if you have a, if you, I've seen people do it um, online, people who are testing this deck. This is why I said I hate that you have triggers. Yeah. You see people who have triggers in their hand, and it's just a, because this isn't a, um, a way to, this doesn't neg you cards in hand. I see people, previous turns, call their heal trigger behind their Vanguard as a boost, as a boost. When they ride the demon train or whatnot. For their setup for that. Yeah. Experience. And then next turn they'll stride Kasumi Road or they'll stride a Hummer Hummer Raider and then choose their heal trigger. Kind of one call two more heal triggers. And then put those back in the deck. Because the two would the two would go back anyway. 
Yeah. But now you put a heal trigger back in the deck. And then you have two. And you shuffle them to make sure they're still there. And you have two drive checks. So you go at least plus one with that. Yeah. So whoever our Murakumo player is, how do they feel about this unit in conjunction with everything? What unit? The, the break drive. Break drive. I like them. Like I said, I, I like them a lot better than um, Magatsu. That's a very wild. I feel I. it's going to take me a bit to get his GB2 ability down. Right. That's but a very reliable. I like the card. It's, it's a reliable, like he's just saying, it's a reliable card for strategy. Yeah, the sequencing of that and the reliability of being able to put triggers back and not lose advantage, that's the key thing. Because normally when you put triggers back in the deck, you lose something. Unless you're great nature with their orangutan. Because you get it back. But with this, you actually go plus one. And you're putting heals back. So it's pretty, it's, it's pretty reliable. Yeah. Definitely not on yeah, the That ends the uh, Murakumo double rare. Now we go on to the only Link Joker double rare of the set, mm -hmm. other than the Perfect Shield, and that is Mixed Deleter Chaos. Oh. Mixed Titch. <laughs> yeah. This unit's ability is um, auto, like counterblast, two cards with Deleter in its name, and then choose two cards in your hand and discard them. When this unit is placed on Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, delete all of your opponent's Vanguards. Choose up to two of your opponent's rear guards and then lock them. So basically, it shuts down the front row. That's pretty devastating. They can't shut down the front row. For counterblast, for E special counterblast two, and discard two. So you get your discard back with your drive checks. I play two of them in my fucking leader deck because all the units that say delete, sorry, lock a unit, are always locking the front row. So I can delete the Vanguard and then lock two back row units, and then I can just play the mates and lock the two front row units. Yeah. So I might play him for the lock anywhere. His cost is pretty steep. If it wasn't for the lock anywhere, I probably wouldn't entertain the idea of putting him in a deck. It also keeps stride pretty honest, because don't if you stride over something that has no power, it's just a 15 base no. instead of a... No, it goes under the and get the power. No, because, oh. because they, decided to, they decided to buff... Oh, um, mega um, When you stride over a stunned Vanguard, the strategy comes in rest. If you stride over a deleted Vanguard, even though when you stride over their power is zero, for some reason they get the power, but they don't activate the break stride skill. Yeah, the break stride ability fails, but you still get because the stride only copies base power. It doesn't care about it manipulate. It doesn't care about its changed ability, which is why you don't get plus two from cross rides or other stuff like that. All right. And okay, it, at least it'll be the break strike. Yeah, so and this guy's, other, really this guy's other ability is a very typical one you see of units that are from the older generation, which is whenever it attacks the Vanguard, it's a 13k base. Plus, so, it, yeah, so by itself, it can attack. They, they made a habit of making all the Season 3 bosses, whenever they attacked Vanguards, if, if they attacked alone, they could at least hit uh, cross rides without needing a trigger. Because uh, Season 3 is all about cross rides. So. Except ones that still charge, so they only attack the 12. Yeah, no. yeah. I guess you use soul charge for the process. I, I, yeah, I think it's because yeah. the soul charging you can probably use for other effects to do other things. Which that's my only real. I yeah, see where you're going. That's my only real comeback to that because you're getting yeah. something for it. Oh, yeah. Reaching the home stretch here, we're now on to just the two remaining dark irregular double rares, and we started off with again. I wish Shang was here so he could gloat about this, and that is um, Char. Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. Charlotte Vampire. Charlotte shot. Vampire. They changed its name a little bit from the old translation. It was Charlotte. It, it was it was Char Harlot yeah. Vampire, and now it's a lot less pronounceable. Of uh, Charlotte <laughs> of Charlotte Schrott Vampire. Um, I'll talk about it. I was in plan. Yeah, this is the uh, break. This is the break stride unit for uh, Dark Regulars. Um, its first ability is Continuous Vanguard Generation Break Two. Uh, during your turn, if the number of cards in your soul is six or more, it gets power plus ten thousand. Um, and then if the number of cards in your soul is ten or more, it gets critical plus one. So during your turn, if you have six, if you have ten or more cards in soul, it's fifteen. It's it gains plus ten in a crit, just to make my blade master feel like shit. Yet again, another card that they made like free because it's just super difficult for dark regular to get a certain number of soul. Yeah, when you they got to learn, it's just not that difficult. When you shit like making things free. when you shit like D Creeper, the old yeah, exactly. draw trigger. Um, a lot of the new Amon stuff they printed in this set that we probably won't be yeah. going over because we're just going over all the foil. You know, it's, just, it's just they gotta stop making so many things 
free. The next card I'm going to go over allows you to salt charge pretty easy too. Yeah, th th this card was ridiculous. I read this card and I'm wondering why the f why the hell Gurgit isn't a fucking double rare and this yeah. guy was a triple rare. And that, and the go on with your whole thing about how easy it is in the soul charge now. It's uh, shrine ability is. Um, auto, Vanguard, Catalyst 1. During the turn that uh, one of your G units tries to this unit, you may pay the cost. If you do Soul Charge 2, and then choose one of your opponents, and then choose one of your Vanguards, and until the end of turn it gets Auto, Vanguard, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if the number of cards in your soul is 6 or more, uh, your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and retires it. At least this is a damn cost. At least it gives you a choice. At least this is a Catalyst 1. Yeah. I mean, no, it's not that hard to get 6 cards in soul, but at least this has a cost. Yeah. That, that's more or less my thing. Quit making X number of soul, X number of attacks just a cost to make things free. It's just not fun. Yeah. Would you have rather for the stride instead of it being, what was it, 15 in soul? Would you have rather been like Counter Blast 2 with 8 in soul? Yeah, probably. Well, no, just, no, no, Counter Blast 2 with 15 in soul wasn't a problem. It's just that it should have been like a Counter Blast 1 or Counter Yeah, it should at least have a Counter Blast. So like, it was just one. So like a Counter Blast 1, soul 10. I could probably well, deal with that. If it was, if it just had a Catalyst kind of one, everything else exactly the same. I don't think. I don't well, think. My, my issue is it was it. just, it's just free. Yeah. Like, like Lambros. It's and just the biggest problem with it is that yeah. free skill. The biggest problem with Dark Regulars in general is that in Japan, um, despite the clan, everyone agreeing that it's gonna be pretty playable now because of Harlot, uh, Gil Reyes, or people playing with the Amon shell. It's just that Japan just doesn't play Dark Regulars no matter how good they might, how, how good they are or seem. Yeah. They just don't play Dark Regulars. And it's, it's 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 just one of those clans they don't play. It's similar to Tachikazis, Angel Feathers, um, Great Mega Angel. Mega Colony. It's just a clan that's there, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's just a clan that they'll agree is good, but they just won't play. And the last double rare of the set, again feeding into the whole, it's not that hard for them to soul charge that much anymore. And that is Squall Maker Vampire. This is the Amber clone for uh, Dark Dark Dark. Regulars. Its ability is uh, Generation Break 1, Counter Blast 1. When this unit attacks the Vanguard, if it is boosted, you may pay the cost. If you do Soul Charge 2, and then it gains power plus 5,000 until end of turn. So with a 7k booster, you Counter Blast 1 to make a 21k column and Soul Charge 2. My only issue, Paul, is with this card, I don't care if it's a Soul, I don't care if it's a Counter Blast 1 clan mechanic card. We all have them. He shouldn't gain 5. I think like, if he gained three, you would have been fine. That's three, my only broken three. play. He shouldn't gain power. Be being a 21, I think, is a problem. If it was a 19, but it's only gaining three off a of 7k yeah. boost, yeah. Uh, so, it, so it could ping rear guards. Yeah. But even though it could it could ping rear guards, that's the problem. All right, let's wrap up. We got, a, we got like one, bar, one battery in around 19 to 20 yeah. minutes. So is that everything? Um, We're almost done. After that, it's just um, really strong uh, rares in the set. Um, oh, the, only, yeah. the, the only rare like really worth talking, though, and it's only because of the deck it's going to go in, um, I expect to see this guy in a lot of Overlord decks, and that is everyone's opinion. E everyone's opinion on Dragon Knight Emad. Broken. Dragon Knight Emad is a grade two for Kagro. That's in the rare slot for um, of this set. Its ability is uh, uh, generation generation break one, counter blast one while it's on rear guard. Um, when your opponent's rear guard in the same column as this unit is put into the drop zone due to one of your card effects, you may pay the cost. If you do. It gets uh, power plus 2,000 and auto rear guard at the beginning of the damage step. That uh, at the beginning of the damage step of the battle that this unit attacks, if the number of your opponent's guardians, if the number of your opponent's cards in their guardian circle is one, you may choose one of your opponent's guardians, retire it, and nullify any effects that Reed cannot be hit. So if you are able to supercharge him with like a Gokyo uh, retiring a bunch of cards. If you can attack for like 32, maybe get a critical trigger. If it's like a 31 2 crit, they can't perfect shield it. Because you can just negate the perfect. Unless you throw an additional uh, yeah, five, 5k. Well, no, you just throw a perfect shield and then like a great oh, 3 or a 5. You, you basically have to make sure you have more than just one unit on Guardian Circle. Alright. If you put Gyre behind them, it's, it's a, a with a crit. <laughs> it's, it's a super strong ability. Um, it's a little better when it's attacking on its own because. It basically forces your opponent to have to guard it with uh, two 5Ks. Which um, is kind of awkward. Yeah, um, I think this card is nowhere near as good as what people say. Um, he's going to be played a lot just because he's awkward to play against. You also said Omega Loop was terrible when you first heard about him. Personally, I don't care about this card up a shot, though. Um, I think so this, card, really kill th this card will be difficult just because you have to play around him. I don't think this card is as good as people say he was. If, if his ability was, if something was retired in front of him, he gained plus 2,000. 
and then the ability counterblast one if there's only one unit. If you didn't have to pay for the 2,000, I wouldn't. Um, I think this card would have been way better. Hmm. So you didn't have to burn the counterblast for the effect. Counterblast flips everything though. Like, uh, I'm not seeing the downside to this card. All they do is unflip. It's just very awkward to play around. It's because you're going to use your counterblast too heavy now. You're going to keep getting rid of your rear guards if you're playing uh, uh, Flame of Strength, and you're just going to be put, you're going to put yourself in a bad situation when you think you're trying to outplay your opponent. When in reality, you're going to be outplaying yourself. Yeah, it's a very awkward card to guard against. Yeah. So that, uh, for the most part, is our review on um, uh, GBTO3. Um, a lot of good cards. There's actually a really, really, really balanced set overall. Um, no nothing, nothing really sticks out as something that you have to get um, to be playable in the meta. Because as of right now, um, most of the people I still talk to believe the meta in um, Japan and then over here when a set comes out, it's still going to be a combination of Abyss Diablos, um, Thing Saver, and or Jewel Knight Royal Paladin builds. Uh, people still see uh, Dote being a thing, people still see Aqua Force being a thing. For me, for me personally, the only card that really stands out done. as a you have to have it right. is if you're playing Link Joker against Glendius, right. you need Amnesty. The, the, big, the big money cards in the set are obviously the two generation rares for the first time. Um, Aura Geyser is pretty up there too. Um, a lot of people want Hammer Rider or Hammer Raider. Because the first time we played Murakumo is just really yeah. Because Murakumo actually got really good support. Um, so they're pretty excited for that. We hope to see you guys for set four, in which I will be happy as like oh, I've, ever, I've ever been because it looks like Angel Feathers might finally get more support. So yay! Um, yes. So yeah, that's our review of GBTO three. Really good cards. Nothing really too nothing too broken. So. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, visit our Facebook and our Twitter page. Um, keep sending us comments on uh, decks you want to see, fights you want to see. And we actually have a question for you who have stuck around this long. What was the question I asked earlier? Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to do, we're gonna do questions to put in the comments at the end. It was, um, yeah. what do you think the best and oh, worst yeah. like, break stride combos are? What do you think was? is the best and worst break stride combos are in the game? And when I say break stride combos, I mean... Just the simple interaction of having a clan's break stride, and then you stride on top of it. Um, the G flipping unit, the main stride, the, the main stride for that particular clan. So we're talking about Blade Master riding root uh, and striding uh, root flare, um, Asa striding jingle flower, um, all to, all, big belly. yeah, big belly striding Minagar, yeah, the yeah, boss Lambros, uh, Grand Gallop X Tiger. What one do you think is the best? Which one do you think is the best? Which one do you think is the worst? Leave it in the comments below, and we'll see you guys next time with more fights, more battles, and have a good one.